Welcome Tom, welcome Thank to the you. Horrorcon YouTube channel. This is this is our first out in, not our very first interview, but this is our first out in uh, at Horrorcon. Okay. Um, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Very good, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm having residual jet lag, but otherwise yeah. I'm fine. I'm pretty good actually. Um, how, how are you finding Horrorcon so far this weekend? It's been great. I mean, lovely people. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing I like the most about the uh, the horror fest. I've done this is my third horror festival, and I like everything about them. But I really like the chance to meet the fans. Yeah. Because uh, y- you get strokes, you know. The, yeah. I can't tell you how many ladies came up to me yesterday and said, "You are the scariest thing in that movie." Oh, you are the best thing in that movie. I love that movie. Nobody ever says that to me in real life. No. <laughs> so it's nice to come to a festival and get stroked. Uh, yeah. And I got a lot of that <laughs> yesterday. And uh, as I told you on the way up here, we have yeah. people in Birmingham are very, very nice, they very are. sweet, very lovely nice. people. So, what's the uh, oh, go on, carry on. No, Tom. no, I'm done. Oh, you're done. <laughs> what's the earliest horror film that you can remember that you've watched? The first one. Ah, uh, I adore old 1930s classic horror. Yeah. Uh, that that's that's the reason I'm trying to get into get into the gambit and stay in the gambit, the horror thingy, because I think I'm underneath this makeup. I'm really a good Christopher Lee, very good Vincent Price, very good uh, even Bela Lugosi and uh, and Peter Lo- those old guys. Uh, what's his name? Vince, I said Vincent Price. Well, those guys. I think that's where I'd be like. And so you know. I think Dracula was the first horror picture I ever saw with Lugosi. Yeah. And there's a wonderful one, um, well, Freaks, of course. Is that, yeah. Does that count as horror? Freaks are more like... I would say, yeah. Yeah. I would say, yeah. So it fits yeah. the genre, yeah. And, of course, uh, Frankenstein and The Old Dark House. Do you know that? No, I don't know that one. You don't know it? No. Oh, God, watch it. It's so good. It's a good Halloween watch. It was made in 1932. Uh, James Whale. Yeah. who, you know, did a lot of them. And it's just grand. And So that's the sort of thing I, I daydream about being and I, being in. And I know they don't make them anymore. <laughs> but uh, I keep hoping if I hang around long enough, somebody will be inspired to say, oh, that old guy would be good for one of those old-fashioned pictures. I'm doing something now called uh, What's Buried in the Backyard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Explain a bit about that. Oh, it's, gosh, it's wonderful. I like to work with young people in film. That's 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 the, my my main joy in making pictures. You know, they don't have much money, but that's okay. Uh, but they're kids with dreams, and they like yeah. have great um, imaginations. This is uh, a young director named Mike Blevins. Oh, okay. He was the uh, I don't know the right word. The juicer. He was the electrician guy, electrics guy on a little short I did called The Lift which I made for Billy Butler of uh, Ghoulies fame. Anyway, Mike Blevins was the uh, electrician on that. And then he's all of a sudden making a picture called What's Buried in the Backyard. And he remembered me, called me up. I am what's buried in the backyard. This guy, oh. <laughs> this guy, this guy <laughs> buys a house out in Southern California, very house proud. He wants to give himself a septic tank so he gets a backhoe and he's digging up his backyard. Hits wood. What the heck is that? Opens it up. It's a coffin in his backyard. Good grief. And he's like thinking, should I open it? Yeah, what the heck. So he opens it up. There I am, dead as a door now. <laughs> and I am lying on more money than you can imagine. Millions of dollars. I've buried oh. myself, had myself buried with my swag. So he has a big moral dilemma. My God, I got all this money in my backyard. What am I, should I tell somebody? Who do I tell? Who was this old guy? And it's my property uh, now, so it must be my money. And so he finally decides, I'm going to take that money. Well, this is a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, it's coming on to a bit. <laughs> and then I commence to haunt him and really mess with his head. Oh. And uh, it's just like, you know, me lurking around. And he slowly comes totally unwound. He winds up shooting his daughter and her fiance, uh, a case of mistaken identity. Bam! Kills him dead, and then he totally freaks out and uh, loses the plot. That's the plot, basically. I've told you all the spoilers. It's being very well told. I don't tell it as good, but he's a really good filmmaker. Yeah. He wrote it. He's directing it, and he's got 14 other projects up the pipe. 
and he likes my work, so I'm hoping yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can be alive in the next one. Although I'm, I'm a pretty lively corpse. You are, yeah, by yeah. the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want me in your backyard. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure I hire you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just don't take my money. No, that's it. Um, how do you go about preparing for a whole a, a role in, uh, in well, the horror genre? You know, let me think. Insidious was my very first horror picture, and then I told you I did the lift, a short, yeah. for William Butler. That's going to be online pretty soon. I don't know how to tell you to find it, but it's called The Lift, and it's about maybe 15 minutes long. Okay. It's got a really good surprise ending. Very well done. Uh, that's my second. Now the third is What's Buried in the Backyard. So in terms of preparing for Insidious, I auditioned for it with a scene that wound up not being in the picture. Uh, and I auditioned pretty good, but I didn't think any more about it and went away. I didn't hear until about two weeks later. My agent calls up and says, Honey, you booked that thing. What thing? That horror picture. What's it called? Insidious. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know from Insidious. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was in Insidious. And they sent me the script. Uh, and I knew about my character from the uh, scene I'd read. It was a scene for Parker Crane in the elevator with the young mother yeah and now it became silent and i was mute in the picture uh it was a lovely scene where this old man is very sentimental about how nice the nurse's little boy josh yeah. is and how boy i wish i could be young like that and so and you know uh i thought oh this poor old guy has had some hard times i don't think i got the full script i think i had that scene so I prepared for the scene thinking I was going to do that speech. I, you know, figured out where this old guy's head would be at. And I don't think I even knew at that point that he had attempted, well, he had to tried to castrate himself. I don't think I even knew that. So I just mainly concentrated on the poignancy yeah. of this poor old guy. Obviously, he had a bad childhood. Yeah. Uh, and then after we shot all that, I was supposedly wrapped, and they called me about a week later and said, we want you to come in for another scene. And I believe that maybe, I don't know if I inspired them or not, but they found the character, the writers found it interesting enough that they wanted to do a show little backstory. And then there's that, my, my favorite scene in the picture is where you know, he's wearing a wife beater t-shirt and these awful old baggy boxes, <laughs> this old pitiful old man in this terrible old bedroom and slowly he puts on the makeup which I really like doing I got to and I got to put my lipstick on and all that jazz and then I I got to put the whole costume on when we were filming it and all that jazz and then I put the wig on and then I'm like her you know and then I go over and I get that chromium saw off the uh, <laughs> the, the the lineup of I weapons say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I descend on that poor little girl all trussed up in the corner uh, so I did not have any time to prepare for that because I just got there that day yeah. and they told me what I would be doing. By that time, Mr. Juan was gone. It was his assistant director, and I can't remember the name. Very nice guy. And it was like a silent picture. They said, okay, you're going to do this, and you're going to do this, and you're going to do this, and you do that. Just like, like a silent movie, you know, which is what I love. I always wanted to be in silent movies. So that was how, there was no preparation for that. I just, I came to work. <laughs> that was my preparation. <laughs> Not a bad way to go to work. Not a bad way to go to work. If I could have that every day, I'd be happy. So you play the bride in black. Obviously, we've got to that now. Yeah. Um, if you haven't already visually seen this. Um, so what... I mean, obviously his mother had a lot to do oh, with... Yeah, that with, woman with, was a wonderful actress, too. Oh, she is. She's, she's a terror, a ter absolute terror. I think she'd may make me wee me so. Yeah, no, she scared me to death just watching her. I, I heard she is the, does horror cons once in a while, and I oh, kind of wow. wanted to, sort of wanted to meet her, but I wanted to observe her from afar. I hear she's really a very nice person. Yeah. She's just a good actress. But I thought she was superb. She was so... She was. Vicious guy. Oh, she was. Poor little, poor little Parker didn't have a chance. Poor guy. No, he didn't. The hair didn't apart, like that. Apart from her, probably being one of the main aspects of why you know Parker turned out to mm -hmm. be how you know come yeah. to be. Um, do you think there's any other elements behind? You know. Well, I mean, uh, Parker's. I think about. I actually think about that. As a matter of fact, <laughs> because I I daydream. 
well, wouldn't it be swell, since they keep making sequels and prequels and, and, and side views, wouldn't it be interesting if there could be at least a couple of scenes between Elise and this old man yeah. that she meets someplace, this old man named Parker Crane, wouldn't that be interesting? And then he turns out to be who he is. But just like these two old people, I don't know, meeting and having tea or something in the coffee shop or something. Be, I don't know if there's, I think there would be an interesting dynamic there. Yeah, and I've totally lost track of your question. What were you no, saying? I just said, do you think there's anything else that kind of... Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, I think about his story sometimes, and I know I'm going to be interviewed. I mean, we see him as a little boy, dressed as a girl in that room with all of the dolls and the doll houses, and I think he's looking out the window sadly at the kids playing. Yeah. He can't even go out. No. So I sometimes try to visualize how long did that go on? Do you know, I mean... Did he, when he got pubescent, was he still yeah, was a he prisoner? Still, yeah. And, you know, you think, boy, why don't you stand up to that, that can I say yeah. bitch? Yeah, can you, you can stand, say, yeah. stand up to that bitch and slug her one and get out of the house and go play ball with the kids? I think about that. How long did he stay under her dominion? And I think, boy, what kind of a head must he have on his shoulders and how intense was her hold on him? So, you know, did he make it into adolescence with this frightful mother? Did he make it into his 20s, his 30s, his 40s? When did this, when is it? Oh, this yeah. harridan die? And then when she died, what was his life like? I guess there's like enough money that he never had to go out in the world and think oh, about yeah. working. Uh, and I always imagine that that bedroom in the scene where I'm getting the garb on is probably mom's bedroom. I'm sure he took over her bedroom when she died. Yes. But I think... Uh, his whole backstory is fascinating. It is. How long did he stay under her thrall? Yeah. And what happened when she died? And was that when he decided that he was going to go out and kill? Why does he yeah. prey on young women? Yeah. Except, I suppose, he's so possessed by his mother's horrible spirit, and the mother would never want him to date a girl. Yeah. So probably she like possesses him, and he goes out and he kills young women that he would really like to have sex with or whatever, the mother in him makes him go out and kill young women. I don't know why he dresses as a bride in black. I was about to say, what? why is that's that? Another question. I don't know. Why does he dress as a bride? I don't know. Bride? <laughs> it's, it's so, there's so many questions. Yeah. That, you know, it, it's... That's why, that I think oh. is... I, I don't even know if the James and Lee intended to create such an interesting character. But he is fascinating. He is. The, the old Parker Crane, the bride in black. There's so many unanswered questions that I think that's why the character is so popular. And uh, so many dynamics as well. Yeah. I mean, do you think it was Parker's when he castrated himself? Oh. Do you think that was the final? That was the final straw. I in think his, he, he, he finally decided. Okay, mom, I'm going to be the woman you want to be. Whack! Off it comes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the age of seventy, poor old bastard. Waited a long time, but I think that's it. I think he's doing it for mom. I mean, for a, I mean, in you know, during the events of uh, chapter three, um, some there's been some kind of speculation in that that he was working with the we the wheezing demon. Yeah. What's what's your thoughts on that? Do you think he was working with the wheezing demon? I don't know. I think, think I think that I think that once you get over into the uh, the other, is that right? The other, yeah, is that, yeah. It, yeah. I think when you get there, you're independent. I think you're like you're your own demon. You're your own demon, your own universe. Yeah. You know, you're all like kind of knocking into each other, but you maybe don't even see them. I don't think he's working with anybody. I don't think no. any of them are working. No. Uh, on anybody. They're, they, you know, they, they have their own agenda. They have their own agenda, and it's to do something to any human, any living creature that has the misfortune to fall into their, their place. No, I don't think he works with anybody. I mean, he possesses people as well. Yeah. Is there anyone you'd personally love to possess? Me personally? Yeah. <laughs> Who would you like to possess? Who would I like to possess? Oh God! Don't rush me. No, we're nah, not going to rush me think. here. No, 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 no. Who would? Well, it's more like who would you like to be, uh, it, it really? And uh, I really admire the career of James Franco. So I guess yeah. if I had a possessive, I think that kid is really. Oh, well, he's a gentleman. Thank you. He's forty years old now. I admire the heck out of him. He got in on the strength of his looks, of course, because yeah. he was really cute. But he was smart, man. He knew how to play it, which is a very admirable trait in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, you see all the detritus of these poor baby stars that 
mm-hmm. didn't know how to play mm-hmm. it, that, you know, got into the pills and the shooting up and all that stuff, and just fall by the wayside. And you wonder, how do these people support themselves? Uh, but he was very smart, and he, he knew how to work his looks, and he knew how to uh, make himself opportunities. And early on, he learned how to parlay his success into being a filmmaker himself. Yeah. You know, God bless him. I've auditioned for a couple of his low-budget pictures. Uh, one was there. He made a, bi- a biopic about Charles Bukowski, the poet. Oh, yeah. I don't even know if it ever got into oh. any kind of a release, but I auditioned for him twice. He uh, had me called back. I think I auditioned for one other one for him. But I just think that he's swell. And, of course, did you see The Disaster Artist? Yeah, fantastic. The kid is brilliant. Oh, he's fantastic. Wrote it, produced it, directed it, and plays in it. And he's hilarious. Yeah. And he was so kind to crazy old Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. So anyway, if I could be anybody, I'd like to come back and be young and be like James Franco or be James Franco. I wouldn't mind possessing him and being in that yeah. career. Oh, nice. I like yeah, that. that's answer. my choice. Yes, yeah. Um, Obviously, with with the bride, about there's so many, you know, there is there is so much back to the story which we've discussed. Yeah. If approached to do maybe a prequel, hell yeah, follow that. You'd be <laughs> of course. You'd love to do. Yeah, that. I'd love to. I, you know, sometimes I I have never written play screenplays, and I'm not any kind of a writer. You know, I'm I'm a pretty good Irish yacker. I can talk pretty good, but I know that it's a great skill writing writing treatments and screenplays. But sometimes I say. Jeez, man, if I could just write well enough to take that idea I told you about, yeah. putting a lease in park, and if I could write a treatment of that, I could get it into Blumhouse, I could get it into Jason Blum's yeah. hands and uh, Lee and James's and say, you don't have to pay me anything, you don't have to pay me anything. If you like, just, just take it and develop it and make sure I play the part. Yeah. That's one of my, one That's of my great fears is that they will find mileage still to be had from the Black Bride. They'll, they'll, they'll put her in a picture again, but the part will swell and get too big. And then they'll say, geez, Tom was great, but he's not like a name quality. Let's get, I don't know, Terrence Stamp or somebody. Oh, that no. will kill my heart if Tom, that Tom, happens. Tom, it's your wrong. I, well, if it was given away, it'd be criminal. No, I no, don't I'm think kidding. they would do that. They're no, swell guys, they actually. Are. Besides which, they're, they're loyal. Yeah. I mean, look at, you know, and they... Uh, I work cheap, and that's a virtue. <laughs> <laughs> that's a virtue over at Blumhouse. Yeah. Well, to be quite honest, with you, I've got one last question. Yep. As the insidiouses go on, because I think they are in the looks like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you going to be open to going back? Oh, I know you said you'd be open to doing yeah. that. You'd be open to I going would back be open. In the of course, I'd to be asked back. Uh, I wasn't disappointed when four happened without me because. I'm basically I'm dead in in the yeah. spirit universe. Yeah. I've been exorcised, so you can't come can't come back at all. But they seem to be pretty good at hooching things say, around. Yeah, they, they could get you back in some way, shape. I or wish form. they would. I would enjoy it so much. I would really be honored. You know, it was really fun to play with Lee, Lynn Shea. Yeah, total pro. Oh my God, I learned so much just watching her. That day that um, I shoot the thing where I I come at her and I say, "This is how you die," and I, yeah. thro- I throttle her. I was nervous, she was nervous, I was nervous because I was going to be strangling a, you know, a famous person, <laughs> and she was nervous because she was going to be strangled by a total stranger, and she didn't know if I would stop or not, she didn't know what kind of skills I had, what my chops were like, so she was really worried, and she was not above directing me <laughs> yeah. quite a lot, but I didn't mind, but anyway, we got it, and I was very relieved to finally hear the director say, okay, moving on, which means that you've got what they want, so I said, but yeah. then, then I hung around to watch the next scene, and it was Lynn in that scene, in that hotel, in the, uh, in the, no, the further, I'm calling it the other, in the yeah. further, it's yeah. in that hotel in the further, and she's talking to this man, and she thinks it's her husband, yeah. and she's so, you know, she gets into tears, and she's so moved, and then she realizes it's a, a demon, and she takes out the knife and kills him. She shot that thing six or seven times, and it was a big, long, continuous really? take, you know, not much cutting, just that perfection every time. She got all the levels and all of the emotion just right. She's a total pro. And I said, oh, that's why she was worried about being strangled, because she was going to have to talk a little yeah, bit. Was, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but I, it was wonderful just to watch her work. Uh, she's she's a, a great lesson. So. 
I hope I get to work with her oh. again sometime. Well, I'm hoping. Nice. I'm hoping for a backstory. I'm hoping for a <laughs> prequel. I'm hoping for you to come back in some way, shape, or form in Insidious. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, look for what's buried in the backyard. And I'm quite looking forward to that as and well. And look online for The, the lift. lift. And also, I shot a really nice thing for uh, it's a fine young man named Stephen Elliott. He's a writer, and he wrote a I guess it was a famous book called The Adderall Diaries. Right. You ever hear that? Mm -hmm. And James Franco yeah. filmed it. Uh, anyway, Stephen is, has a web series now. It's called Driven. Yeah. And the conceit is that everything is basically in like uh, an Uber or a Lyft, a ride share thingy, and it's a passenger in the back. And it starts with them talking, and then it can branch out into their lives. He had a script he wanted me to do. It's about 10 minutes long, written by some superb writer that writes for The New Yorker. can't remember his name. But I shot that for uh, Stephen, and it hasn't been uh, put out online yet because yeah. it's in post. But look for that, too. Oh, well. Driven, uh, uh, the web series Driven, Stephen Elliott. And I think I'm really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> You're good at anything, Tom. Oh, I don't know about that, that, but I have fun trying. That's that's, that's all. It. That's the, that's the thing about acting. You never you never get it right. You never get it right. But then sometimes you go and you see the thing and you say, "Damn, that was pretty good." <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you live for. Those moments yeah. when you can sit in the dark and say, "I was pretty good." That's it. So well, that's it for me. No, thank you very much. Thank you for having me up. Pleasure. Mm. Remember to visit us on the Horrorcon YouTube channel. Like and subscribe, guys. Thank you very much. Tom, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Right, we've got um, one more question. What's that? We've got a generic question we're asking all guests. Yeah. What is your favourite horror icon? Well, again, I go back to the old days. Icon. You know, I don't know. Or icons, if the truth be told, I go more for like the players, and it, it, you know, I'm sorry, it's old Lugosi's Dracula, and I, I love that. I mean, he he started it. Well, no, actually, there were some silent horror things that are pretty good, but he's 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 just oh man, I mean, picks that picture up and just carries it. It's just amazing. And yeah, he's my favorite. I'm sorry, I'm an old fart. No, that, uh, <laughs> we've had good ones over the whole weekend. Uh, just uh, chopping uh, it off. Oh, good. Well, thanks. This no, was fun. Thank you very much.